in an era where knowledge can bring so much joy to the world, where knowledge can be earned from the tip of your fingertips. Ustaka Negrisawa aims to provide that necessity to the people of the far and near, with facilities that is equipped with the up-to-date technology. Research and studies would be a breeze. Understanding the needs of the many, where knowledge seeking is crucial for the growth of the mind, we made it our ultimate goal to serve you the best knowledge center available. Outside our walls, we go and reach out to users and potential users in hard to reach areas. We'd go over and beyond by traveling to the suburbs to spread knowledge. To enlighten them through several knowledge activities via Pustaka's knowledge resources in our collection. Our responsibility to share latest technology and information. This way, we can ensure that the passion to seek knowledge never fades. It is our utmost mission to cater for and exceed the expected information needs of our users. For such noble cause, we study the profiles of our varied users to undermine their information requirements, get the needed information resources in whatever available formats, printed, non-print or online, and match them with the requirements. We take the extra mass of informing users about our rich information resources and tell them, step by step, how to identify, select, retrieve and use these resources. We want our users to be literate in information and knowledge. We want them to be our knowledge beneficiaries. As a priority to preserve the knowledge and our heritage collections, we are committed to provide the user with access for those special and unique collections of Sarawak. With the facilities for storage and repositories, we ensure all the collections and public records which are more than 25 years old, and other documents, papers, instruments, statutes and statutory order, regulations or decrees, directed by State Secretary to be maintained, preserved and kept in the state depository on account of their historical value or public importance. We are eager to expand by preserving the collections through legal deposits, donation, bequeath, oral history and also transfer of public records for permanent preservation, regardless of its format and media. By creating standard bibliographic records, we will ensure the library resources or materials published in Sarawak can be accessed and will be preserved for future generations. We are going beyond boundaries in order to guide, advise and train all Sarawak government agencies with focus on the implementation of records and archives, management practices and standards thoroughly for Sarawak civil service. Researchers can use our facilities to do research on specific materials whereby assistance is always available. Having been here almost uh, 20 over years as a user of Pustaka, um, it has been a very encouraging experience. Uh, looking at the staff, how they, how they operate this place and, and for the past 20 years this place is still in a very good shape and, and it's even better now. So this is something that is very encouraging for us as users. Uh, I think the best thing is that the library actually somehow in a small way uh, that changed my life. First of all, I think the best is that I don't have to buy so many books. And then you don't have to search so far away, but you already can find it in, in the library. It makes my life easier. You can see maybe you say reader is very confined to this, maybe very introvert, but actually the books make you more extrovert meaning that you can actually connect with people better. Oh, thank you very much, Pustaka Negri Sarawak.
Hello and welcome to our webinar sessions. A warm welcome to all our invited online audience from the Sarawak government agencies and to all fellow colleagues of Pustaka Negeri Sarawak. For those of you who are watching us live on our Facebook and YouTube channel, wherever you are, welcome and thank you for tuning in. I assure you that this session will be worthwhile. So everyone, Today on our Media Information Literacy Week at Pustaka Virtual Platform, we will be covering the topic of effective media and communications, enabling social economic change. Today's program is in conjunction with Global Media and Information Literacy Week 2020. Oh, I'm sorry, 2021. I'm still stuck on <laughs> I said, sorry for that. And then for your information, uh, Media and Information Literacy Week has been celebrated annually globally from 24th to 31st October every year. The celebration is led by UNESCO since 2012. And this is Pustaka's second celebration of the Media and Information Literacy Week. I'm Fikri your host for today's webinar session. And with me today is our guest speaker, Madam Dina Ye. Hi, Madam. Hi, Fikri. How I are am, you? I'm good, thank you. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. I'm so happy to have you back again with us this year. So allow me to brief today's speaker, which is Madam Dina Ye. She is a KB's regional sales manager with over 20 years of experience in information industry behind her back. She has in-depth knowledge on scientific information and current awareness requirements for practitioners and researchers in the agricultural community and had conducted various training. And then... Madam Linas also holds a bachelor's degree in economics and master's degrees in library and information science from the University of Malaya. Wow, such a great person. Yeah. And then, so for today, our objective will be to aid you in developing such strategies that, I, that is to lo look at relevant published studies in order to answer key questions relating to agricultural problems. With that, these are the things that you will be getting throughout this one hour sessions. Firstly, to understanding understanding KB, compendia, ebooks and reviews. Next, to access the KB databases remotely from home and wherever you are. The thirdly will be effective search strategies with KB's ontology and to manage your search results. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to begin. Before that, I'm going to brief or to show you on the steps to log in into our OPEC and following that to access KB. So before that, I will show you my screen. Oops, sorry. First and foremost, we have to 
Google OPEX Pustaka and then click on the service. And then before we can uh, access to the online database of Pustaka Nikishawa, you have to register as member. So if you have registered as members, you have to log in your server ID and then put your log ID. Choose your location to sign in. Choose online database. And then here we have KB for you to use. Yeah, here we go. That's all from, from us. And then before I hand over to Madam, just a note, if you have any questions through the entire session, just pause away and we will answer some at the end of the session. Also, stand a chance to win an awesome and special prize during this MIL week. Stay tuned and I will let, I will let you know how. With that, I will hand over the session to our Guest speaker, Madam Nina. Um, thank you, Fikri, for the introductions. So uh, it's a pleasure to be here today uh, to share with you um, Kabi's experience in um, media and communications in conjunction with the Media and Information Literacy Week. So today, I think that the topic I'm going to talk about is, um, is sharing with you, you know, the uh, our experience, Kevin's experience in using media to, uh, to en enable uh, social economic change, especially in the agriculture uh, field. Okay. Um, so can you see the slides? Right, I uh, hope everybody can see the slides quickly. Yes, madam. We can see mm, okay. that's good. Um, right, so um, I'm going to briefly, uh, briefly take you to introduce, you know, what, what is CABI, what do we do, and then our experiences in, uh, in mainly development communications and how we use media uh, to, to reach out to, um, to, especially to the farming community um, in, in terms of helping them to, to change the uh, what to call their practices or their behavior to, to achieve a better outcome. And also then uh, we're gonna then uh, dive into the resources, cabin resources that is available to you uh, via Pustaka and, and how you can perhaps use some of these resources in, in your own outreach program, okay? Um, so um, briefly, um, CABI, C -A -B -I, stand for Center of Agriculture Bioscience International. Okay. Um, it is an intergovernmental organization, um, not for profit intergovernmental organization. Um, what we call set up uh, through a UN uh, treaty level agreement. So basically, um, our member country um, has to ratify. Okay that they agree to join as a member country at the very highest level, okay? Uh, and the member country are basically the owner of CABI, okay? And um, currently uh, we have about uh, close to 450 staff worldwide and we are based in 20 locations, okay? Our headquarters is based in Wallingford, UK, okay? So uh, what does CABI do? Okay, prim our primary, Primary activities is basically to um, 
to address issues related to um, agriculture and environment by applying scientific information to solve problem in this area like food security or, or food safety. Okay, and how do we achieve that? Uh, including by publishing information, okay, that is supporting uh, a lot of our program. Okay, um, we have books, ebooks, uh, some of the e learning uh, material, compendium, and online information resources that I'm going to show you later. Um, here's a snapshot of our member country, as you can see there. Um, um, there are um, major countries like Canada, Australia, UK, as well as some of the countries in ASEAN, for example, mm -hmm. Malaysia, in Philippines, Vietnam, uh, Brunei. Uh, uh, these are also uh, member countries of CADI. So the member country basically uh, drive, uh, determine the strategic directions of CADI. So, uh, but uh, in essence, what we do here is basically to help farmers um, by uh, bridging the gap uh, from, you know, the, from the research to applying it in, in, the, in the field, okay, by applying scientific knowledge to help solve problems in the agriculture and the environment. Okay, and in... Every activities that uh, CADI do uh, is basically to help achieve the Sustainable Development Goal, the SDGs. So as you can see there, uh, the, the one, you know, to improve livelihood, to, improve, to increase food security, to uh, put know-how in people's hands, uh, SDG 4, 12, 15, and 17. And we work with a lot of partners uh, as well as uh, a lot of government agencies in achieving this goal. And behind all these goals, uh, in all the activities that CABI uh, does, uh, we include gender equality issues as well as uh, climate actions. So, um, you know, like, um, for example, to, to increase food security, of course, we would uh, incorporate issues related to gender and climate in all these activities. Okay, so as uh, today we are in the Media and Information Literacy Week, so I'm going to talk to you uh, about a little bit about you know, how CABI uh, implement our project okay, by, by using media okay, and communication, which is uh, very important in achieving uh, some of those goals that we have uh, talked about. So um, my uh, media is, is important because, uh, you know, these, these development communications can, can speed up adoptions of, of new behavior and bring about changes sooner. Okay, for example, you know, we are talking about climate change, you know, what kind of behavioral change we need to do in order to tackle climate change or, or to mitigate some of these changes. Okay, so, um, and this, this, uh, what do you call, um, these changes that we are talking about, we're talking about medium to long-term changes, not just short-term change. So what we want to bring about is, is a long-term change so that uh, you know, the, the outcome or the positive outcome uh, can, can be achieved. Okay, so uh, normally in a lot of the, uh, you know, in, in media or development communications, so we can see that sometimes, you know, uh, it can be, uh, people will just assume that, you know, we just push information to, to the target audience and they will just change. So it doesn't happen like that. So, uh, you know, we can see on the left-hand side, effective communication development is, is not just about um, broadcasting generic, generic information. For example, you're talking about climate change, you just don't, say, you know, the world's temperature going to increase by two degrees, uh, so which is not going to change. So, but then, um, and then, you know, a lot of time, you know, the communication, a lot of people just give a lot of information, but not uh, giving a lot of uh, support and infrastructure to bring about the change. So, uh, but in, if you, 
for effective uh, communication, um, you actually recognize that you know, agency of individual. That means um, people make decisions you know, by, by themselves. You know, they, they don't just rely on the information that you, you give to them, but they, they you know, is influenced by a lot of factors. So they make decisions based on their surrounding, uh, the understanding. And also, uh, you need to under what to call understand the uh, the the social economic circumstances of the, the target audience, and then uh, by recognizing that information is just a tip of the iceberg. You know, there's a lot of things that you need to do in order to have effective communications. Okay, so um, as you see along the way, there's a lot of changes to, to realize the potential of development communication. So basically for an effective development communication, you can achieve the desirable output that you want. So a lot of time, what are the challenges that you're going to face is, for example, you want to communicate, but maybe you don't have enough information yourself you know, to, to develop a proper content. So that is some of the challenges. Or maybe um, the target audience is very diverse. For example, if you want to talk about you know, improving nutrition of, uh, of, of, of children, okay, who are you targeting? Are you targeting the people who prepare the food? Or maybe the, the head of the family who buy the food? Or you know, are you targeting people who produce the food? So there's, there could be a lot of uh, you know, people involved. So these are some of the challenges and then you're talking about the time frame, you know, how long is your communication. And sometimes you also need to consider, you know, there is a lot of intermediaries that involve uh, diverse content, okay, the diverse content provider, you know, that you need to think about. These are all the challenges uh, of uh, effective uh, or to realize the potential of the communication. Okay, so as you can see here, um, time and resources. All these involve resources. So you can do a, you know, a short activities, for example, campaign uh, support content. But if you want to achieve you know, a much more bigger outcome, so of course, this usually will take time and also a lot of resources, for example, to a level where you know, policy can be changed or behavior can be changed or productivity can be changed. So these are some of the experiences that Cabby has uh, in terms of carrying out some of the project. So what we do here is basically, uh, first, you need to understand the audience, okay? Who are you targeting? So by to do that, you need to do a little bit of research. So you could go into the resources available to you via Pustaka to do your, maybe your scoping study, okay? And then to help you uh, develop content to deliver uh, to for your hope to reach out to your audience okay and then you know uh, then you develop the communications uh, or you can also include the, the infrastructure the extension services the support and then um, you know uh, for example you when, when you do that, you need to understand, you know, people don't just wait for you to, for the information, you know, they'll carry on with their daily activities. They are, every day they are making a lot of decisions by themselves and there is a lot of people influencing them. So that, that you need to incorporate in your communication. So um, as you can see, these are, you know, what's go in to, to develop the, uh, communications, uh, the research, you know, to, to hear, you know, what is the problem faced by the community, you know, what kind of uh, ICT capability that you have. And also, of course, you need to incorporate the national policy or, or a political economic agenda. Okay. And then, um, then you have to consider, you know, what kind of uh, communications you want to do. Is there someone else that you can partner? Okay, and the, the learning uh, aspect of it, and then the when you the action in terms of channel, the format, how do you engage with the, with the audience, and with the outcome that you would like to achieve. 
then you know what kind of impact that you know how do you monitor the outcome and then uh, the the ultimately is to achieve the long term goal it could be you know to improve the livelihood to enhance the nutritional outcome or, or to to greater anticipations of maybe uh, climate change mitigation or a shock or, or better resilience of farming system. So again, then it would feed back in back to the loop. So, and then it all start again, you know, to, to, to bring about the changes. Okay, so the most important aspect to have an effective uh, communications to bring about social economic change is uh, the first step is the input, you know, to understand the audience, to develop the content. So make sure that these are the content are relevant to the people that you want to deliver uh, the message to. So um, a lot of times, you know, um, a lot of agency or people at the NGOs find that it is not easy to find the uh, readily, readily available or actionable information, okay? So that, that they can use and translate and maybe localize into uh, uh, the language that your target audience can understand, okay? So as, as part of the CADIS mission, um, as you can see later on, um, there is a lot of resource that is available to you that you can uh, access via Pustaka. And uh, versus, you know, if you search via Google, you can return with a million of content, which you are not able, you need to filter through to see, you know, which content or which uh, sources is reliable and can be action upon. Um, but if you use, uh, you know, uh, verifiable content provided by Pustaka, you know, there is some sort of a filter to make sure that the content is, uh, is authoritative and, um, and, and reliable, okay? So, and then, you know, this is, uh, this is heavy experience what I'm showing you here is, you know, uh, and then there is, uh, next step is basically one you have to gather the information that you need and also the evidence of the scientific paper that you have uh, is to, uh, the second step is basically to go into a right shop, you know, how you translate all this material into, you know, to repackage the, all the scientific content into something that uh, non-technical that people can understand. And then, you know, and then it depends on uh, your objective, what, what kind of objective that you want to achieve, is it? You want to, um, you know, to, to help farmers to achieve a, maybe a good agriculture practice, or maybe is it to warn, maybe early warning, for example, um, we have uh, COVID. I think a lot of people know that, you know, there's a lot of communications around, you know, how do you prevent warning, okay? Um, and then, uh, you know, what you want to achieve. And then now we are talking about the uh, maybe agriculture modern, modern, modernization. You know, how do you encourage people to adopt uh, modernizations of the agriculture practice? So how do you translate all this technical information to the farmers or the, to the farming community who may not necessarily have that kind of technical knowledge? Okay, so uh, in the right shop, you know, this is where you can trans, uh, people will translate all this into the level for, for the community. So then next, once you have the content, basically uh, you need to think about what kind of media, which is also very important communications. You need to use the media, uh, what you should use, you know, is it just SMS alone? Okay, maybe sometimes uh, some people don't read SMS, or do you need the leaflet? Or maybe you want to translate it in the comic, comic book, you know, which is easy to understand, okay? Or it can be a uh, interview, radio, radio shows, talk show, telephone helpline. So that's a lot of uh, media that you can consider. But of course, you know, um, you need to also consider the, the resource that you have, okay? 
So uh, this is some example, you know, of the, uh, the objective that we want to achieve, the aim, and then the kind of uh, media, you know, that we can use. For example, can we have this early warning campaign to prevent the, for example, for army work? Okay. So um, the, in terms of media, the communicate that uh, use poster, public awareness, uh, you know, interview with journal, giving briefing to the journalists so that it came up in the paper, TV, uh, that people are aware of it. And also we develop a portal, online portal for more uh, we'll call advanced um, uh, people with uh, access to, to, to internet, you know, they can check on the knowledge bank for updates. So, uh, so these are a couple of examples that uh, can be used to, to reach out to, to the farming community. So now, so that is just to share with you a little bit, you know, uh, how, what can we do in, in, in a lot of our project, okay, by using uh, communication to, to translate uh, the scientific information to the, uh, to the audience, okay, to, to achieve the social economic changes in uh, um, the, that 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 is uh, that is uh, desired and also to, to support the, the SDG goal. Okay, so um, so as I mentioned, a lot of time you know um, when you want to embark on a project or maybe just for your personal use, you know, you might want to do some changes uh, for the better, you know, you might have, uh, you might, you might not have enough information, okay, or you might find it difficult to access information. So, um, in Pustaka, you know, you can find not only cabby uh, content, Okay, you can find a lot of content uh, that could help you in, in the first step in the input on information. Okay, so uh, why is that, you know, a lot of people say, you know, I can just Google, you know, why should I just register as a member, you know, have to remember my username and password to log in, you know, but you, yeah. you need to understand, you know, that there is a lot of information out there, you know, if you search for, um, maybe uh, for now, maybe COVID prevention, you know, that is millions of millions of pages. So how do you know which one is the right information, which one has been verified by expert, okay? Which one is fake news? So, so you need to be able, that's why the information literacy is important. So I think within Pustaka, I think uh, you have a lot of uh, professional, information professional, that is sort of filter through some of this. So a lot of content that you find within Pustaka uh, is, is sort of, you know, is, is verified and similar to Cabbage's content. It has been verified and a lot of, uh, so that you, you sort of have certain assurance to use this information. Okay, first stop. So what I'm gonna to introduce to you is, uh, Cabby Compendium, okay, um, that is available uh, to you uh, as a member. So uh, the Compendium is basically, um, is, is something like an encyclopedia information, okay. This is uh, specially commissioned by Cabby uh, to, to write all these uh, informations is a, uh, that you can apply it is, is sort of uh, for practitioner, okay. Uh, not, so, not so much for people who want to do a thesis or dissertation, but for people who are in the field that you can use it for, for practical purposes. Okay. Uh, there are currently uh, five compendium available. Okay. Animal health mm -hmm. and productions, aquaculture, crop protections, forestry, horticulture, and lastly is invasive species compendium. So uh, invasive species is not listed in Pustaka, but uh, because this is open access resource. So uh, it doesn't, uh, but if you want to list it, you can uh, list it in Pustaka as well. So basically this is a resource that is funded by a lot of agencies and donors uh, to help tackle invasive species. As you know, the climate has changed, uh, people travel, 
uh, a lot of invasive species actually causing a lot of problem in, in many places in the world. So this is a, a open access resource that is available to anybody. Okay. Um, so basically, um, what you can find in each of these compendium is, is according to the topic and the problem that you want to solve. For example, if you are talking about, you are, you are looking at the problem of the livestock, okay, then you go to animal health. If you are in the aquaculture, you know, you go to aquaculture. So if you have uh, problems related to, you know, some, some disease or, or pests affecting your crops, you go to the crops. So uh, each of these compendium would have their own access point, so different URL. So you need to go to the right compendium to search for the content. Okay, so if let's say I'm, I'm searching for a forest tree species, okay, for maybe my forest plantation, okay, or maybe uh, you would have to go to forestry compendium. So if you search in animal health, you won't find any content related to tree species. Okay, so uh, just identify by the name, it will tell you whether there's the right content uh, compendium to go to. So what does it cover? So in animal health and production compendium, so it basically cover all livestock, all livestock species for food, yeah, including the, the, the product, for example, you know, the meat, uh, the milk, and also the food safety aspect of it, okay, and the husbandry. So, and, and also the, uh, the diseases, okay, uh, that is affecting the, the, the species, okay. And it also includes information like uh, nutrition, um, what they call nutrition, breed, and uh, the management. So if you want to look for maybe uh, uh, a good practice, okay, in terms of maybe uh, handling of uh, maybe meat, okay, you can search for animal and production compendium. Okay, next is aquaculture compendium. So basically these cover all the uh, important um, species, okay, or cultured aquatic species. So see, yeah, we're talking about farm species, yeah? so uh, not so much on uh, a wild, uh, wild species, okay. So uh, it includes also uh, fin fish, crustacean, you know, uh, mollusk, algae, seaweed, okay. So all those farm species, so prawn, crab, mollusk, run, okay, all would be included in there. So it, the end the system and the caging, you know, and also uh, there is a lot of, uh, and also in environmental issues, and you can find a lot of case studies, and a lot of these examples are related to Southeast Asia. So you can find something that is related to uh, maybe Malaysia, or Borneo, okay, to solve. And then uh, crop protections basically all cover all important crops, okay, including our commodity crops, okay, as well as food crops. And here, uh, because crop protections is basically how you protect the crops from disease, from the pests. And it also include natural enemy for those who are practicing, you know, chemists trying to encourage uh, what they call uh, integrated uh, crop protections. Uh, so uh, it also include a natural enemy or, or what biocontrol for biocontrol. So in here, as you can see, there's a lot of content. I'm not going to go into technical. I'm going to show you live later. And then forestry is basically all the economic important tree and wood species are uh, mainly for plantations. Okay. And then uh, lastly, the horticulture compendium. So horticulture compendium is slightly different from crop protection compendium. So crop protections is basically looking at problems uh, related to the pest and disease of the crop. While horticulture cover the whole aspect. Okay, 
from, uh, from planting, breeding, down to, you know, once you have harvested, how do you, how do you uh, including the post-harvest handling, you know, how you handle it until you reach the market. So there, there's a lot of issues related to post-harvest, you know, soil management. You can also look at urban, urban horticulture, organic horticulture. So it's, it's much broader, not just focusing on crop protection. So if you are talking about, you know, if you have, uh, if, if let's say you have uh, maybe a, a durian or, or pineapple, then you want to look at um, the post-harvest issues, you know, once you have harvested, you know, how you can uh, handle it properly, the post-harvest issue, okay, uh, you will search for the culture companion. So, but if you're talking about, uh, you have problems uh, related to pests of, maybe your mango tree, then you go to the crop protection company. Okay. okay, so those are the uh, five compendium that is available to you. So uh, I'm going to just explain through all the, the different type of resources, and then we're going to go into life. Okay, so then uh, you also have books, uh, Kabi books in uh, Vaya Pusaka. Okay. Um, Kebi have been publishing books for a very long time. So these are some of the uh, well-known books, for example, uh, Life's of Wee. Okay. And then uh, some books that is authored by a uh, prestigious author. Okay. What it covers here is uh, you can find books related to agriculture, okay, policy, uh, economy, okay, productivities, veterinary science. Okay, animal science, uh, which also include aquaculture and fishery science. Okay, and then you have environmental science, okay, uh, air pollution, uh, including forestry conservation, urban ecology, okay, uh, soil biodiversity, uh, hydrology is, is included. Okay, and then you have the human health and nutrition. Okay. Um, we're talking about you know one health, health of animal, health of environment, and health of human. Okay, uh, nutrition, health promotion, and then there is content books related to tourism, recreation, and tourism. Okay, that means uh, tourism as a driving force for 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 development. Okay, and then of course you have the the plant sciences. So these will cover crops. Um, you know, breeding, plant breedings, um, and, and many more. So currently, you have close to a thousand, yeah, uh, cabbie books uh, in Pustaka that you can access, okay? And uh, these are from year published, uh, from year 2000 up to 2021. So you have a very latest book that can be published, okay? So um, I think earlier on, uh, Fikri has shown you how to access okay, uh, the uh, Kabi um, resources online. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take you through uh, a live demo. Okay. So I have about uh, maybe 15 minutes okay, to do a, a live demo. I need to... Yes, you can. Yeah. It's out from here, and okay. Um, stop sharing this. First. So I'm gonna share my screen. Okay. So um, first, can you see the screen of Kabi eBooks? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right, so yeah, so Kabi Books is, is very simple. Okay, so um, you can see um, these are the subject area that I've mentioned earlier. Okay, so if let's say you are interested, you don't have any topic in mind, you just want to browse, okay, like you browse a bookshelf, you can either browse in general on the main page. These are whatever content that we publish, okay, the new title that we publish, uh, you can just browse. Oh, but if let's say if uh let's say I'm looking at 
uh, human health and nutrition. Uh, you, you're interested in human health and nutrition, you can also browse by subject. All right. So as you browse in, uh, maybe, uh, for example, have a natural concept, um, you're interested in this book, you just click on it. Okay. Uh, That's a summary. And then um, within each chapter, you can read the summary or you can, uh, you can click on it or you can straight away view the chapter. Very easy. This download as PDF, you can keep it, you know, read it, print it as you like. Okay, so it's as simple as that. So, and the second way to access is that if let's say I'm interested in, um, for example, since we are talking about communication, let's say I'm, I'm interested. Okay, when you are in the subject page, you will only search within the subject. Uh, I want to go back to the main page. You just click on the um, and the cabin logo there, you take you back to your main page. You can do a search. Okay, let's say I am interested in communication uh, about you know, to improve nutrition. So it's, okay, and then uh, you can nutrition. Okay, this one, what I put in here is what you call a Boolean operator. And or and not that you can use to combine your keyword. Okay, I put here on purpose so that you can see. If I do not, if let's say you just key in communication and nutrition, so every spacing that you see here automatically the system will add on an end. So you don't really need to, to put it in if you let's say you forgot. So let's say I, so basically here, what means that is searching communication and nutrition. So uh, when it search, basically it can search by uh, chapter. Okay, so here um, you can straight away, um, it will pick up the chapter that is related to communication and nutrition and straight away you can uh, look at the, the book chapter. So instead of browsing, as a physical book that you have to browse the table of content and look for the relevant information that you want. So as here you can see, um, there's, there's quite a bit of agriculture for improved nutrition, um, and nutrition, okay, and home parental nutrition here, for cancer patient, and then, uh, so all these chapters are related to nutrition. So. To look at it, it's, it's very, very simple. You just, uh, you just have to click on it. So as you can see here, we also have an open access book. Okay, so what it means here, uh, can we do publish books that is open access? So this book will be added on to automatically, okay, uh, as uh, in addition to the books that uh, has been acquired by Pustaka. Okay, so, um, and then on the, on the right hand side, okay, you can um, you can further uh, narrow it down by geographical location, or you can uh, narrow it down further, okay, by you know what nutrition are you talking about? Are you talking about uh, you know nutrition intake, or you're talking about behavior changes, okay? or you can further narrow it down to the uh, or nutrition education to a specific topic area that you want, okay? So this indexing is added in by, by Cabby for all the content that you, you can find. So when you do a search, you can also have an option to search by which subject area. Let's say I'm only interested in human. I'm not interested in animal nutrition, okay? So you can narrow it down okay, to, to only human nutrition. Okay, so it will down narrow it to eight. Okay, so of course, when you filter, you can search it by book chapter. You can also search it by um, book info means uh, the book, the whole book itself. Or you can also show content that I don't subscribe to. Uh, in this case, Pustaka, basically you have everything that can be published. 
So uh, what is shown uh, under Pustaka is, is whatever can be published. So, so this is about books. So have a play with it. On the help page, okay, there is um, some training guide. Okay, if you uh, if you're interested, okay, you want to do a more sophisticated search, you know, you can use, as I mentioned, the bullet operator combination. And there is a couple of uh, examples that you can follow. And also the, uh, the phrase searching quotation. This is very useful when you want to combine keywords, like for example, climate change. So if you don't use that, you will search climate, you will search change. So you have a lot of uh, results that might not be relevant. So, but if you use these uh, quotes for phrase searching, so it, it will be much more accurate search. Okay, so this is a little bit about books. Very simple, very easy to use. So next one, uh, just remember that it covers everything from agriculture down to leisure tourism. So uh, next, I'm going to show you is the compendium. Okay, compendium is quite unique in the sense that uh, it is, it is, the content is like an encyclopedia. So what you have here is, is, is a record, you know, with a, a lot of sections. Okay. For example, um, as I mentioned, Animal Health and Productions Compendium basically cover all um, economic important livestock species. So um, the main content is basically in the data sheets. So if you click on the data sheets, we will show you, okay, uh, what kind of data sheets you can find. Okay, so you can see here, when I click at data sheet type, Okay, you have data sheets of breed. So it covers 1,577 economic importance livestock breed, like cattle, ruminants, poultry, uh, pig, uh, you know, uh, livestock breed. And if let's say I only want to look at breed, okay, you click on it and you have all the data sheets of breed, okay? So here is that one, one five five. you can export this, uh, the names, the breed. If let's say I want to look at maybe um, within the, maybe I, I would just look at uh, something that's more relevant here. Maybe, okay, this cattle, okay. Uh, when you click on the data sheets, okay, what is different from a general database that you you, you might be familiar with is that this is a content of a data sheet which come with a lot of sections including images okay so it, it tells you let's say if you are doing a, a project on, on cattle breeding for example so you want to uh, you want to look at husbandry okay uh, reproduction, genetic, uh, breed improvement status, you can uh, look at the content in here. So if you wish to take some of the content out for your own use, okay, you can see there is a report generator, okay, that you can extract the information from uh, the data sheets. And maybe I just want some pictures, Okay, you can move them about, for example, I will move it out. I want to look at uh, maybe uh, environment, requirement, reproduction, uh, genetics, uh, maybe the economic um, and the products. Okay, so then you can then generate a report. So once you generate a report, you can save it in HTML, you can save it in document, or you can print it out. Uh, maybe you're doing an outreach, you're doing a workshop, or for your own use, you, you, can, um, you can keep this, okay? And within each, um, so this is just uh, in general about a breed. So within a breed, you can also see um, uh, there is also a data sheet related to uh, the pathogen, okay? So for example, uh, maybe um, you're somebody from the, 
veterinary department. Okay. And you want to uh, maybe you want to do a, a communications program related to um, African swine fever. I think that is uh, suspected maybe African swine fever cases. Uh, then you want to do a communication program. So you want to contend. So maybe I want to look at uh, prevention. Okay, you can do a search. And I'm doing a bullying. So I know the, uh, the names of the disease or the F3. Swine fever. So I want to see, is there any content related to prevention of African swine fever that I can use? Okay, so you have uh, close to 550, 65, quite a lot. Okay, so you can see there is a data sheet of the disease. Okay, so if you click on it, <laughs> So this is a data sheet. <laughs> okay, so I, I would, I think this will be the last uh, example that I will show you. Okay, so that I'm uh, aware that we don't have so much time. So this is, as you can see, this is a data sheet of a disease. Earlier on, I showed you a data sheet of uh, uh, protocol of a bleed, okay? So, and then you also have a data sheet of the pathogen. Okay, if you click on this, it will give you, uh, they bring you to another data sheet of the pathogen itself, the virus. Okay, so if you're doing an outreach program, okay, you want to, you need a content to, to cater to maybe to inform people, you know, what to look out for, what to, uh, you know, if you need to inform, uh, to alert, uh, your, your nearest veterinary, um, your, your what do you call, um, Jabatan veterinary. If you have, uh, maybe you've seen a pig with a particular symptoms. So you, you could use this, you know, actionable content that you can uh, create a leaflet maybe as uh, uh, through your communication. So maybe I want to, um, you know, you can cut and paste, you know, these are the symptoms to look out for you know, what kind of symptom to look out for, and then when you need to alert, if there is, uh, you have seen such a thing on your livestock, for example. So, and then uh, maybe you also want content related to, uh, maybe they, you won't, won't want the clinical sign because it's too technical, but you want to look at, you know, what kind of prevention and control that you, you can use, reuse, and translate it into a more uh, easily understandable, uh, actionable uh, content for, for your communications to the farming community. So you can see that there is some information that you can extract. So from here, you can quickly uh, use a report generator, for example, okay, uh, to copy over some of these information that you can develop in, in your rights. Right shop, for example, I want the pictures, uh, I want the identity, and then I want the uh, prevention and control, uh, and also the economic impact. Okay, and then you, you can just quickly use it, you know, for to, to generate something quickly to, to reach out, and then to so that you'll be able to, you know, uh, alert people, you know, that is to look out for something. Um, that has this particular symptom. Okay, so this is a little bit about the compendium where you can extract, uh, depending on the content that you require, if it's livestock, you go to animal health and productions compendium. And then within the data sheets, you can also find other references, okay, uh, related to, um, you know, if, if you are a vet, you want more information, you can, uh, for example, look at, a more technical information to support your, your work. For example, here, emergency preparedness. If there is an outbreak, you know, you can look at the example of, you know, what other people have done. Okay, this is from, a, from OIE. So the, the authoritative, authoritative body for animal disease. Okay, so uh, this is a little bit about compendium.
So each of the compendium have a similar format. So if you go to aquaculture compendium, it is a similar format that you can use. You can search, you can browse, you can also look at the smart searches. Okay, so these are three prepared searches done by the editorial. Okay, if you're only interested in food safety and quality, you don't have to think of a keyword. It's already been done for you. You just browse and then click on it. It's already doing the searching. Um, you can narrow it down to, is there anything on Malaysia? You have a lot of Indonesia. Okay, you can narrow it down to, uh, let's say I want to do only a food safety issues, content related to food safety issues in Malaysia. You know, so then you can um, have, a, have a read. Okay, which one is relevant to you? So, um, before I, any questions so far? The compendium? No? So the other one I want to show you is basically the uh, web review. Okay. So if, let's say you, you have a project and you are doing, or you want to do a, a scoping study, you want to find out you know, what's currently happening in a particular topic that you are, you are interested in. Okay. So the uh, cabin review, okay, is, is basically is, uh, is a content where somebody is doing a reading, an expert is doing a reading for you related to a specific hot topic area. You know, what is going on, what research is going on, where is the direction of the research, okay, or for example, an outbreak or what's going on. So um, it, it covers um, as similar coverage as, um, as uh, what do you call, as what we cover in our books. So basically from agriculture down to plant sciences down to human health. Okay, so when you search, you will search across the all subject area from agriculture down to the human health area. Okay, so the if you don't search, what you, you can browse the latest is always on the top. Okay, so here you can see uh, these are the specific areas. So here I'm I'm not sure whether I didn't I didn't search maybe communication. So, I'm not sure whether that is or not because this is so generic. Okay. Um, okay, there is about, you know, uh, some communication. So these are some of the papers uh, related to uh, animal welfare. Okay, that you, you can uh, precision agriculture, okay, on, on such specific problem system. So as, as you click, click on it, for example, Okay, uh, you can read the summary to see whether this is something that is relevant to you. Okay, and then if you want to read it, you just have to click on the PDF, uh, the, the full text article button, and you can download the PDF. You can keep it, save it, print it, up to you. All right, so this is a little bit technical. So if you want to use it uh, for sort of... Um, for the field, so you have to re-adapt it, uh, uh, but it will give you an overall view of what's going on in this particular area. So uh, this is suitable for those who are in research or in, in the U or in the uh, research institute. All right, so I think I have come uh, almost to the end of uh, my presentation today. So I think we should move on to the more fun part. So before, which is the quizzes. Um, but before I move on, is there any questions? Is there any questions from, from the audience uh, in the chat? Uh, apparently we have one question for you. And mm -hmm. then the question is, hi, how do we log into KB eBooks? Uh -huh. So Fikri, I think you need to show again how you log in into Ustaka. <laughs> because once you pass that, you can access anything that Ustaka is uh, providing on your online site. Yeah. Uh, should I stop sharing? Do you have anything else to share? Uh, no. So basically, the next slide is just a, a five, uh, some, some quizzes questions. 
So um, yes, uh, I will just stop sharing for now. So can I repeat the? Yeah. How to log in to our website, and then into your KB online database. Yeah. 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 All right. So for. I'll share my screen. So to those of you who uh, will miss out to how on how to log into our KB online database. Firstly, you have to log in into our Pusaka Nikushrawa online public access catalog, which is on uh, OPEC. And then to log in into our Pustaka Nikeshawa, you have to register as a member. So after you register as a member, you log in to OPEC by using your Shrawa ID. After you log in by using Shrawa ID, click on online database. Can you see my cursor here? Is it? Madam, can you see my uh, cursor? Yeah. Okay. And then KB is on the first list of the online databases. So here, KB. Yeah, I haven't logged in. Sorry, uh, we have some technical issues here. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay, I repeat the order to log in to our KB online database. First, you have to uh, log in into OPEC, which is online public access catalog of Pusaka Nikishrawa. And then you choose online database. Under, under the online database, on the first list, we have KB, and then you just have to click on the KB here. That's all from me on how to log in to KB. Thank, thank you very much, Fikri. Um, just one, uh, can I, if I may, uh, if, if anyone having issues to log in into uh, into the online or to access KB, is there anyone that they could should contact or is there any uh, or place that they can uh, get in touch to uh, maybe they have not they are not a member yet that they they can sign up or and make an inquiry uh, yes uh, you can contact our reference librarian uh, by uh, chat Chat her by WhatsApp number or online by email. Okay. Uh, or you. you can call uh, our library by the number of 0, 82, 44, and 2000. I repeat the number 0, 82, 44, 2000. Yeah, thank you. And then thank you again, Madam Lina for sharing these valuable information. I'm sure that you have a lot of our online audience today. So let's move on to the next, which is thank you for the questions from our participator. Now for the awesome and special prize that I have mentioned earlier, Pustaka's literacy unit has come up with daily literacy quiz. 
The daily quiz is uploaded on our Facebook page that is Pustaka Sarawak. The daily quiz will be updated daily at 4.30 p.m. started on 24th October until 31st October 2021. So get on our Facebook page and look for the quiz because when I say awesome and special prize, I do mean awesome and special prize. <laughs> Thank you, madam, for the insightful sharing session on. So uh, it is a pleasant pleasure to have you again on our webinar session this year. And to all our dearest online audience, thank you for tuning in. Your support has made this a great session. And then don't forget to fill up the online satisfaction form. The form link is provided on the chat box. Thank you once more till we meet again on the next session. Take care and stay safe, everyone. Thank you, madam. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Tersergam indah megah menjadi kebanggaan kita bukti wawasan dicita maklumat dan pengetahuan. Penuh terhimpun harta ilmu untuk kita teroka. Staka negeri Sarawak, wadah ilmu untuk semua. Bersama kita manfaatkannya. Staka negeri Sarawak, berteknologi dan berusaha. Berkhidmat ikhlas untuk kita. Ka negeri Sarawak tersergam indah megah menjadi kebanggaan kita bukti wawasan dicita maklumat dan pengetahuan penuh terhimpun harta ilmu untuk kita teroka. Negeri Sarawak Wadah ilmu untuk semua Bersama kita manfaatkannya Ustaka negeri Sarawak Teknologi dan berusaha Berhikmat ikhlas untuk kita Ustaka negeri Sarawak Tersergam indah megah menjadi kebangsaan.